This inverter has been working exceptionally well to power my home, but I wish there was more information available right at my fingertips of what's going on. So in this video, we're going to attempt to create a display using just a regular tablet. We'll see if we can get it hooked up so that every time I walk past it, I can see at a glance what's going on with the system. Here we go. Hi, I'm David and I'm on a mission to take my house and garage completely off grid. In previous videos, I've installed this Schneider XW Pro 6848 inverter. Now this inverter works awesome. And in a previous video, I hooked up this Insight Home uh, through their Zanbus communication. I updated the firmware on the Zanbus and updated the firmware on the inverter. But without a display, I'm kind of left in the dark of what's going on. So I was chatting with somebody over at Schneider who had a potential solution, and we're gonna see if this works. Now this is a Galaxy tablet, and I'll leave links for everything I'm using down in the description below. And it doesn't specifically have to be this tablet, maybe you have another tablet you'd like to use. But we're gonna try to hook this tablet up. In addition to this tablet, I have a few other accessories. Uh, this is just a mounting bracket that we'll be able to put up here. I have a more powerful uh, wall charger uh, for the tablet, and that will be so that we can leave the display on, on the tablet all the time. Now this particular tablet comes with a wall charger, but it's lower in wattage. So you'd have to turn the display off periodically. With this one, hopefully I can leave the display on 24 seven. And we also have this oddball, uh, what is this? A USB-C and ethernet uh, combiner. So. With this, hopefully we can hardwire the tablet to the Insight Home. That way we're not using the Wi-Fi on it. So let's unbox all these things, get them hooked up, and hopefully it works. I don't know yet, we'll find out. Right here we have the Galaxy tablet. Inside the box, we have the tablet. Looks like it's gonna pop off here. There we go, shiny. Now the tablet does come with a wall charger, uh, this little guy, uh, but the wall charger is not powerful enough to let this display stay on 24 seven. So that's why I picked up an additional wall charger. Uh, this guy, it's a PD. Uh, so this one should be able to handle, what is it, 30 watts. So this wall charger can put out 30 watts, which will mean that we can leave the display on the tablet on 24 seven. All right, so we've got a wall bracket. Then we've got this USB-C to ethernet. We've got a USB-C port and an ethernet port. Oh, and in addition to this, I've also got a Cat5 cable that I'll be using, a Cat5e. All right, so let's see if we can get these things hooked up. All right, so I just finished the setup. It wanted me to create accounts or link accounts and all this other stuff. I just skipped all of it uh, because this is just gonna be a display for me. So on the back of the display, uh, it comes with this guy. Let's try to fit these things together. There we go. So it wants you to screw this in place. I'm not gonna screw it in place. I'm gonna try to tape this. I bought some double-sided tape from 3M. We'll try to tape it up here. Uh, if that doesn't work, I could screw it to the wall or something else, but I wanna try this first. So maybe right here. That might work. All right. All right, well, I think that'll work. So with the tablet up here on the wall, right at eye level, uh, let's see if we can get some power run to it. So this is the 30 watt uh, charger. So I have a three foot Cat5 cable. Let's get this hooked up and our power wire hooked up. So our wire is gonna come down and then on the bottom side is the second port with, uh, I don't know, those three little computers or something, uh, symbols. So, so let's plug this in and we'll put this back up on the wall. I've got those two screws there. At this point, I think we have all of our connections done. There's enough slack here. If I need to take off the cover of this wireway, I can still do so. Uh, so let's see if we can actually make the connection happen uh, to display the data. We now have a solid green light on the inside home. Let's check our tablet 
And yeah, so Insight Home popped up. All right, so it's asking me for the password to get into the Insight Home through the Wi-Fi. To do that, the password is printed on the back of the Insight Home. All right, so it worked, excellent. I'm trying to figure this out as I go. I don't know all the details. So let's see, I think this is the home button. And over here is the internet. All right, now I have to type in the IP address. And again, that is printed on the back of the Insight Home. Let's see if it works here. All right, advanced, proceed. Here we go. We did successfully log in, but we're logged in through Wi-Fi. So let's see if we can make this connect through the uh, ethernet cable, this guy, because that won't time out, hopefully, but the Wi-Fi will time out. So set up, no, over here. Okay, so over here it says network. All right, so it's very slow to do this. Here we go, Wi-Fi and Ethernet settings down here at the bottom. And I just typed in my password, log in. All right, well, I guess I finally did it. Um, it's taking a long time to get in there. There we go, now we have the active movement. Okay, so now I'm back here, and I don't really want the admin to be up on the screen all the time. I just want to see what's going on. So let's change this to guest, and the password here is supposed to be guest123 with a capital G. Guest123, and this, um, this password was in the uh, user manual, which you have to download for the Insight Home. Uh, the Inside Home does not come with a paper manual. It comes with a paper quick start guide. You have to download the PDF manual. All right, so now we can see the dashboard and we can see the power flow, uh, but we don't have the ability to change anything. All right, so I'm gonna leave this up and hopefully it does not shut off. <laughs> Well, believe it or not, this is actually day two of this project. Uh, it has taken a full day and a half to get this monitor to connect to the inside home through the Ethernet wire. It was actually fairly easy to connect to the uh, Wi-Fi of the Ethernet router and display the information, but to get it to actually do it through the Ethernet with the static IP and understanding all this different language of IP and gateways and stuff, that was very long and frustrating for me. I was working off of a single Word document that one of the people at Schneider uh, sent over to me because he's testing out this idea. So it's very much in testing phase. And I understand that, uh, so I'm not angry about the lack of help. Uh, the manual for the Insight Home was not helpful. Uh, the webinars were not helpful for this. Uh, but eventually I muscled through it by watching a ton of YouTube videos on trying to understand what all these different words meant, uh, network ID, IP address, all that stuff. So you can get there, it just takes a lot of work. Now in the future, I'm sure this person over at Schneider uh, is going to be putting out a better webinar, at which point the information's probably gonna be a lot easier to follow and uh, you won't have to have the frustration involved. I forget exactly how much this cost. It was around $130, I think, with the parts and pieces, maybe $150. Uh, but I will leave links in the description below to all the parts that I'm using. If you'd like to duplicate this, uh, it, you know, unless you have a lot of time to spend really struggling uh, or you're very good with computers and maybe you just know what things like uh, static IP addresses and how to set all that up is, Hey, awesome for you. Now, in the end, after all of that work and frustration, I'm glad that I have a monitor to be able to quickly see what's going on at a glance. Currently, it's not worth it just with the one inverter because I do have the display up here just telling me what the one inverter is outputting. Uh, but once I start adding in the solar charge controllers and maybe a generator and get all of that stuff to communicate, being able to see all of it on one screen will be helpful, and especially having the uh, logging data. That will be very nice to be able to go back and look at. Uh, I hope to share that with everybody once we get there. 
So if, if your goal is to just have the one inverter off grid, uh, I probably would not bother with the whole monitor thing. But if you do plan on uh, getting into the Schneider ecosystem with the uh, additional charge controllers and maybe getting a generator hooked up, then having the monitor is very nice. So thank you everybody so much for watching. If you enjoyed these videos, please like, subscribe, comment, and share.